What you should know before you buy an air conditioner or a new gas heat unit. Today, if you're watching this and you're a homeowner, today I'm going to save you quite a bit of money, make your air conditioning system or gas unit work a lot longer than it would have worked, and provide you with lasting comfort, or at least make you a little bit more comfortable. Today you're watching HVAC Tips for Homeowners. I'm going to be teaching you what you should know, what you should check before you buy a new air conditioner. And a few of these are super important, like the first one is duct work. What should you know? You should know your duct size. You should know what size filter you have, what size your return grill is. That's where you replace your filter every month. I hope you're replacing your filter. And also, how many vents you have. Size of your duct work, size of your filter, and how many vents you have. If you're thinking, what vents, Tad? They look like this. Count them. Figure out how many you have, because if you do know that, then that means that you can figure out exactly what capacity that the equipment you're putting in has to be able to push for you to have good airflow. So you need to have somebody that can check your duct work and calculate the capacity of the duct, what CFM is able to be pushed through that size duct work or you need to be able to do it yourself. So if that means you need to learn how to use a ductulator and learn how to use a tape measure and measure your duct work and figure out, hey, this supply duct is 20 inches and it'll handle uh, 2000 CFM or it's 16 inches and it'll only handle 1200 CFM. Whatever it is, you need to check your duct work because if your duct work's too small and your equipment's oversized, then that means that it is gonna put strain on every component inside of that unit. And airflow is one of the number one problems. Now, duct work needs to be checked. That's number one. Number two is your square footage because square footage matters. Why does it matter? Because if you've got a thousand square foot, which usually that's around two tons, and you've got a four ton unit, well, then you might have too big of a unit and you might have to have uh, you got too many amps every time the unit comes on it's pulling way more amps than a two ton unit would pull so you can lower your amperage by going to the two ton and if it's four ton that means it doesn't take as long to cool that house off but if you're in Tennessee you got all this humidity so it's not removing any humidity and it's short cycling it's kicking on for 10 minutes and then 20 minutes later it kicks on again and then 10 minutes later it kicks on again so it's great because well it'll just set and only run for 10 minutes but still you're not removing any of that humidity so that's not good for your home and your comfort okay so square footage got to know square footage all right insulation insulation if you've got no insulation in your ceiling or let's say you've got six inch joists in your ceiling and they're not filled up to the top there's only this much in much insulation then what you're doing is you're fighting the outside temperatures, they're coming into your attic, they're, they're making it super hot, and then because there's no barrier of insulation in between that hot air and the conditioned room, it's just sucking all your heat out. So insulation is super important. It's super important to have at least R30 insulation above your ceiling and to have at least R19 in your walls or have foam insulation. Foam is great, but you gotta know how to size equipment especially for foam applications. So get somebody who knows how to size equipment, who knows how to size ductwork. If you don't know how to size ductwork or equipment, I've got a video, link in the description for that video. You gotta be my friend, you gotta be a member. So definitely become a friend or a member and you'll have access to those videos. Invest in yourself. Also, I've got a DIY ductwork video. So you wanna learn how to do your ductwork, design it, all that, size it. Check out that video as well, down there in the link in the description. So, check your ductwork, okay? check your insulation, check your square footage. There's a few other things like, you know, gas line, making sure that's big enough, wire, making sure that's big enough, breakers, making sure your breakers are rated for the, the uh, maximum overcurrent protection of your unit, okay, your circuit amps. So that stuff's important, but really, airflow is the key. Airflow is the key, and it's much better, much better to undersize equipment than it is to oversize equipment. And I'm going to do a video about that if it hasn't already been done. I may have done a video about that. But hey, I'll get a video out there. If you got any questions, remember questions become content. And I can do a video about your question and I can help you. I can definitely help you. So click the join button, become a member. Let me know in the comments. Say, I joined. 
I'll give you my email if you want to converse with me. If you want my phone number, check out the membership levels. If you want a day a week where I consult and I help you, I can do that as well. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Homeowners. I hope you know what to check. And also, I want to say, check with your neighbors. Find out what the referrals are, okay? Find out who does the best work. And if you've got a contractor that comes out to your house and looks at your equipment tonnage, okay, and find out your size too. That's another thing. Find out your size of your equipment. If you don't know how, I've got a video on how to read model and serial numbers. Go down in the link in the description. I'll put that, I'll post that video down below. Finding out what size equipment you have is great because then you'll know what it is. And if a contractor shows up and says, well, you got a full ton unit, I think I'll put another full ton in and doesn't measure your ductwork and doesn't look at your insulation and doesn't measure your square footage to figure out what it is or ask you what it is, you got the wrong guy or girl or whatever. So make sure that you are doing the best that you can by educating yourself so that you have, what am I trying to say here? The best chance for equipment to not break when it's first installed because new equipment has bigger blower, bigger coils, and you need bigger ductwork. And sometimes it's not always in your budget to replace that ductwork, and you've just thought about your equipment. But sometimes your ductwork's not big enough, and you're either gonna have to compromise and get equipment that will work with your duct. But most of the time what I see on jobs, like I just left the job just now, and there was a three ton unit there. It's only 1200 square foot. Looked at the insulation, there's plenty. Looked at the duct work, it'll only handle 800 CFMs, and that's two tons worth. So now they're gonna save at least a few hundred dollars on the price for the equipment going from three to two. And now they're gonna save a lot of money on their electric consumption because it's gonna go down their gas uh, consumption because it's a gas package unit. That's gonna go down. So you sizing equipment right, it could mean that you get a smaller unit and then a uh, byproduct could be you saving a lot of money. And that equipment's not gonna have that stress of that um, increased static pressure and smaller duct work. Hope this gives you some knowledge. Hope, hope you're healthy and you're happy. This is Tad reminding you, I'll keep you cool if you let me. And I'll keep you warm if you let me too. <laughs>